Alright, welcome back guys. We're going to be covering a, another kind of like skill-based uh, video today. This is going to be a video on data response questions, right? I know that a lot of you or maybe some of you guys have already been through your essays and and um, uh, for those of you who have maybe just taken your exams, kids, all right, leave that behind. Essays may have been difficult. It may have been easy for you, whichever one it may be, right? We need to move on and focus on other parts of the exam okay that that can still be a bit of a challenge right and in that case will be the data your data response questions because your drqs or your case studies are actually one of the easier parts to actually score all right so let's focus on this today and make sure that we really nail all the type of the all the different question types that can possibly come out so that we can um answer it properly and get that a that we all want to get all right so without further ado let's go in so this drq um, video will want to cover basically how to score full marks. Okay, you really want to be aiming for that full marks. Yes, it is almost impossible to, but you can actually come very very close to it. Okay, the most important most important tip I have for you at this stage, okay, is that no matter what, right, for every single question, okay, every single question, you always need to remember that you sh you should always use this phrase, okay. And that phrase goes as seen in resource X, okay, or as seen in resource one, two, three, four, right? Um, it shows something, okay, a high, a low, an anomaly, or whatever the question is asking, okay. So basically, essentially, what this tip is okay, is that you always have to quote as seen in resource what, as seen in extract what. The reason why you need to do this, okay, is very simply for the fact that examiners want to know that you are answering the question. Right, if the question is asking you to refer to a certain resource, yet you aren't even talking about that resource to begin with, they're going to be questioning like, are you actually looking at the resource or not? So you want to really quote okay, as seen in the resource what, that way the examiner will actually know that you have actually referred to the resource or extract that has been given to you. Alright, okay. So we jump into our first type of question that can possibly come up, which should be your identify questions. So identify questions tends to be very, very simple, a one or two mark, very, very basic sort of question. All you need to do is simply recognize what the question is asking and state whatever that question has asked. So it's very simply just a state the answer. So this is really the easiest marks to get. You just need to look at whatever the resource or extra is given to you and then simply present that as an answer. So for instance, if the resource shows you a picture of this, okay, a bunch of rocks toppling over the edge of a cliff, it is most likely the mass movement of a rock fall or a rock slide. So very simply, just put in there rock fall and then that should give you your one or two marks that the question has awarded you. All right, so mass movements, okay, I have not covered it before. Just take note that the difference between rock slide and rock fall, okay, one of it is a slide, one of it is a fall. So the fall, the rock fall has a very, very steep angle. Rock slide tends to have a bit of a slope, okay, whereby the rocks will fall off. So this is just a very basic example that I can I can give you. So the second type of question is where it starts to get a bit more tricky, yet it's still extremely simple. It is a describe question. All right, describe questions, we've all heard of this before. You just need to very simply narrate whatever you're looking at. So it's like telling a story. They ask you to describe, you just describe. Keep it as that. Don't ever explain in a describe question. First of all, you're wasting time. Second of all, you may actually minus marks if your concept in your explanation is wrong. So once again, use the as seen in resource whatever and then just simply describe. So over here, I've got three, I think I've got maybe more behind. Okay, I've got three main examples. Let me just check. Oh no, yeah, only these three. These are three of some examples that I can give you. Okay, they are very common DRQ um, your data response type of questions. First one, they may show you some random climograph. For example, the climograph in South Africa versus the climograph in Singapore. Right, so climograph always compare these few, okay, I mean, always describe these few different features. First of all, rainfall amount in mm, temperature. The fluctuations in rainfall and temperature, is there a huge fluctuation or is it constant throughout the year? Um, and it's related months. He okay, always quote the months as well. So for instance, um, there was a very high amount of rainfall. So your highs and low and your anomalies. There's a very high high amount of rainfall in the month of June. Okay, whereas there was a very low amount of rainfall in the month of September, for instance. So that could be how you would uh, basically describe the question. So where it becomes an explain question could be the second part of this um, climograph, which is basically asking you to explain whatever you have just described. So if that is the case, if they're asking you to explain whatever you have just described, you just need to simply throw in reasoning that you know. So one of the reasons could be, let's say if there's high amount of rainfall in June, it could be because of your monsoon season. So that's how you start to realize that you can link all these different questions together. 
The next example I have over here is employment levels. Same thing, show the highs and lows the, and the statistics that they have given you. So always quote statistics. If they say that's 59% unemployed, say 59% unemployed. Okay, and then if it's given in different countries or cities, also make sure you bring that up as well as any sort of patterns that you may see. Is there a pattern amongst LDCs? Is there a pattern amongst DCs? Is there a pattern among urban dwellers versus slum dwellers? Is there a pattern? If you see a pattern, describe that pattern that you are seeing. Okay, and then lastly, any anomalies that you have as well. And lastly, the one I have over here is waste levels or traffic. So this one could be a team three. So you notice that I've got, I've got team one, team two, team three all here. So when it comes to waste levels or traffic, once again, state your highs and lows. State which part of the pie chart or statistic has the largest component. So for instance, in the case of waste, uh, let's say that plastic waste is the highest. So just quote, okay, as seen, as seen from the pie chart, plastic waste has the highest percentage of 85% of all the uh, municipal waste that is found in uh, New Delhi, for instance. Okay, and then lastly, state any anom anomalies if you see it as well. Okay, anomalies you should state if you really do see an anomaly. For instance, if a climograph has been showing a constant level of rainfall throughout the past, uh, throughout the, the, the whole year, okay, throughout the 12 months, but then you suddenly see that there's one month, let's say April, where there is unusually low rainfall, okay, you can always quote that as an, anom an anomaly, okay, they will award you a mark for that as well. In fact, if you don't quote that, they may not even award you any marks. So the third one is your explain type of questions. Explain is where it gets a bit more in detail, okay? And explain questions a way to really give you a guide, okay? So you always need to first describe and then analyze what you see. So explain questions always think of it as a describe plus an additional part on explanation after that. So whenever you explain, always use logic to explain and then use any pre-installed knowledge that you really have in your head. So this is basically all the knowledge you have gained from your syllabus. It's your syllabus content. And then always apply causal links. So for instance, if I give you an example of explain the processes that have led to the formation of cars, of this tower cars. So you want to go throughout the whole process because why they're asking you for formation, you're going to want to explain to me the entire process of how a tower cars is formed. So go step by step. First step, you have got cockpit cars. Oops, sorry, my bad. You have got cockpit cars over here, followed by repeated erosion and weathering. Then it forms a cone cast from after it forms a cone cast because of case hardening with limestone. This will actually form a tower cast. This is a very, very short example that I can give you over here because I don't have enough space. I will link the link to my how how a uh, tower cast actually form in the top right corner of the screen. Go check it out. Okay, that one is where you can really, really, really understand. I've gone so in-depth in detail on how a tower cast is formed. You need to go and understand it because cast area may come up for your da da data response, your case study, you never know. Okay, and it's not exactly an easy topic to master. Okay, another example I can think of over here would be explain how traffic congestion can affect livability. So whenever you come to these kind of questions, it affects livability. Livability, you notice, is always like a very, very um, complex term. So first, what you want to do is always tell the examiner what it actually means. So livability is defined as what? Okay, then traffic congestion brings air and noise pollution because what? Then it leads to increased stress, wasted time, hence a loss in quality of life. So you notice that everything links together. This is what we call causal links. So you want to link everything together by making it sound logical. So you still need to have logical flow as well. Then we move on to your compare question. All right, compare questions is actually one of the simpler ones, okay? Because it is essentially like describing, but now you are just trying to strike a commonality or a difference between two different extracts. So it requires you to observe a set, usually two extracts, and find similarities and differences amongst them. So try and at least get one similarity and one difference. If you can get more than one of either, that's good as well. Okay, so for example, with reference to resource A, compare the internet penetration and mobile penetration of Asian countries. Some of you may have heard of this question before. I won't say where it's from. But for instance, a similarity could be a similarity could be that based on the resources. So this is not based on my own knowledge. This is I'm always remember I'm always using resources. Whatever this in a data response question, um, um, test paper, always always use your resources. Don't ever use your own knowledge unless it is stated. So the similarity I have over here is the higher internet and mobile penetration for developed countries while there is less for less developed countries. So this is a similarity, right? Because be, let's say based on the resources, let's say one resource shows me internet, the other shows me mobile um, penetration. What actually happens is that both resources have shown me that developed countries have a higher level of penetration. That is a similarity that the both of the extracts have. 
okay and then a difference could be that let's say one is seen to be higher in one DC and lower in another DC where their percentages are such so always give yourself I always give the examiner examples if it's needed okay let's say if there's the statistics just throw it in it doesn't it doesn't harm you to actually throw it in in fact it will help to boost your argument um, your answer essentially all right so let's say one resource is showing um, internally against all the DCs how each one of them is having a different level of internet penetration you can say that yes while um, in that case DCs is still higher than LDCs in terms of penetration even within the DC some of them are higher than another that could be a difference amongst the DCs itself okay the account for question all right account for something account for a question is basically like explaining but you just need to try and pick out an underlying cause okay usually when you account for something it means that something has to account for that right it means that there has to be an underlying factor an underlying cause which is um resulting in this issue so it is very very similar to explain questions but you just need to look for the underlying cause of the issue and usually this is from the content of your syllabus so don't go and dig too hard look at the resource you the instance you pick it out boom done for instance you see a bunch of kids starving uh without water what could a possible um underlying cause be poverty okay and then what could be another underlying topic it could be under slums so that is something you can look out for so for example one question that I have, one question i have over here is with reference to resource 12 account for the percentage of plastic waste in bangkok as shown in resource 11 so reasons could be due to increase in population size influence by increase um, tourism okay rising affluence increase in wealth this is basically incre increasing wealth or cost of plastic has actually decreased that is what could maybe say account for a rise in the plastic waste so when you account for something there could be a plethora of reasons okay there could be many reasons you just need to pick out those that will match your marks and make sure you explain it so let's say if i say that there is an arising if affluence you need, you need to explain it for example Oh, with greater technology in today's society, there is greater access to education. Hence, people are becoming smarter. They have an education. They're able to actually get better jobs. Hence, this will increase the affluence within the country. That could be an example of how you explain. Okay, make sure you always explain. Huh? So, account for you may have to explain. It's not a described question. Account means that you have to uh, really um, be responsible for that um, problem that has been laid out for you. Right, so the sixth kind of question is a suggest question. So suggest questions are actually quite good for you, okay? Because it's really like a free question. It's like a free and easy question whereby you can suggest anything that makes sense, right? It's similar to accounting, but it's just that it's a bit different as well. They all have their own differences, okay? Um, but it still has to fall within the context and the content of the syllabus. This one, no doubt. So what I recommend is that you always explain at least two reasons. You can give more under time constraint. That would be good, okay? But you just need to suggest whatever the question is requested, so for instance, down here, I have got one. Suggest reasons for the pattern of card, de uh, card dependence for Delhi as seen in resource 12. So there's at least two reasons. So for example, if the pattern is very high, okay, let's say it's the, the, st the statistics have shown that card dependence is extremely high. Okay, you can say that it could be due to greater affluence or lower taxes. So people are able to afford cars and then it's a wealth uh, uh, status thing, status quo. If it is low, it could be due to lower income or increased prices or imports. If it is fluctuating, it could be due to sudden changes in government policy or boost in the economy. So these are all just random reasons that I can just throw out for you. But they all make sense, right? And that's the whole point of a suggest question. is for you to suggest something that has come from your syllabus itself, but is able to apply to that question, whatever the question is asking. So whatever it is, always read the question first and then think of what your syllabus has had offered has offered you and then plug it into the question and suggest that that it could be a possible reason <coughs> possible reason for whatever the problem has been okay so the last one i have for you is actually the somewhat the hardest okay it is the biggest mark you cannot miss out on this question whatever it is you need to make sure you do it if it requires you sacrificing the other questions it's okay this is the only question which is made which is sorry this question and um your suggest questions or possibly some of the explain the bigger mark questions are level marked okay all your very simple identify describe they are all point mark so as long as you have the point you get the mark for this one you need to have a level so to get the highest level <coughs> my bad all right so you have to get the highest level you always need to adopt a criteria okay i've i've already gone through this in the previous video the five useful things you need to know i'll link in the top hand corner of the screen so go and check it out first okay because that one will show you how to actually use criteria. I've gone through each criteria um, somewhat in detail. 
I want you to go through that first and then come back here. Okay, but essentially, you always need to adopt a criteria for these kind of questions because why? They are mini essays. So essentially, because they are mini essays, you need to form a stand. And you forming a stand is based on all the resources that have been given to you. Okay, so usually I would say have only two different points. Don't go for three because three is... Uh, you, you may not have enough time okay have one for one against but always make sure you evaluate so evaluating could always be like evaluating the different stakeholders involved it is basically what your criteria has um, stem your argument on that is how you evaluate you evaluate around your criteria so if you have given assumptions okay you can also evaluate that to say that these assumptions may not actually hold true in reality because of certain reasons so always remember to have a stand you must have a stand on what um I mean, as in, sorry, you must have your own personal stand on the issues that have been put forth. Okay, because the extracts and the resources can show you anything. They can really show you anything, but your stand is what matters most. Okay, so you can always agree with the resource or you can back to differ. Okay, but whether you agree or disagree, you must make sure you have a contrasting view. So on one hand, yes, while well, you agree because of why. On the second hand, you disagree because of why. But overall, you still agree because of certain things. So that may sound a bit confusing, so I'll just clear that real quick now. So how do you agree more than you disagree? Let's say if the stand is that you agree with the question. How do you agree more than you disagree? Okay, one way to do it is that I said through your criteria. So for instance, your agree um, um, paragraph could be something whereby you agree because of a certain stakeholder, stakeholder group which is being affected. So your second paragraph which is a disagree could be that, yeah, although you disagree, okay, but maybe the stakeholder that is involved there is actually not as important as the one you have um, discussed before. And let's say if the whole DRQ, the whole data response or extracts case study is about the elderly, then at the end of the day, your elderly will still matter the most. Hence, you would want to agree that they are indeed the reason why you agree more than you disagree. Okay, if this sounds a bit confusing to you, it's alright. Okay, I want you to go and check out the video that I just uh, linked up there as well. Okay, I mean, I linked it before regarding the criteria. When you go and explore that video, I think you will fully understand what it means to evaluate and how to actually write a very, very strong argument through the use of good criteria. Alright, so if not, that's all I have, okay. Uh, the next video that I will, I will hopefully want to upload, okay, could be something along the lines of your GI, okay, your geographical investigation, if I have the time too if not i hope that you did enjoy this video okay do be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as leave a comment if you have a question or anything um as well as do subscribe to the channel okay it really does help me out a lot okay let's try and get up to 150 if possible by the end of this year that would be amazing um if not yes i really do hope you you learn something in this case study uh, video because case study is where you need to score the marks, all right? Essay may not have been um, the best thing for you, but it's all right, okay? Case studies is always very easy to fight for marks, okay? I've never once gotten less than an A for that case study because case studies really, as long as you understand how to answer according to all these questions that I've given you an example of, it should not be an issue at all. All right, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, bye-bye.